Okay, so next up we have Jeff Cookie from Swinburne University telling us about the Keck Y-Field Imager. Hi everybody, this is Jeff, as she mentioned, from Swinburne, it's early morning here. Um, I'm gonna tell you about the Keck Y-Field Imager and it's brought to you by these wonderful people here listed from, it's a collaboration between Swinburne, Caltech, UCO, and AEO. So the first thing is, you know, what is the Keck Whitefield Imager? And it will be the most powerful Whitefield camera, optical camera in the world. And it will hold that role for the foreseeable future. This means that it's going to do high impact science, uh, resolve longstanding problems, and things that are unique only to Keck. It can only be done at Keck. And this is even in the era of 30 meter telescopes. So it's uh, going to be mounted at the prime focus, which is up here in the Keck telescope. With the secondary, you know, which holds the secondary mirror right now. And the Keck telescope was actually designed in this hexagonal cage for a, a prime focus camera. There are these modules that roll in and out, and you can exchange the secondary with an instrument just like you would kind of that cast grain. And this is a cutaway image of the uh, design for KWFI. There's a lot on this slide, but I'm just going to focus on the fact that it's a very straightforward and robust instrument. It has a simple four element lens system that allows maximum throughput and it uses the uh, successful heritage of the Zwicky transient facility detector system. Also in the assessment, um, we're looking at having a deployable secondary mirror, which the secondary mirror would lift up like this. It'd be out of the way to get the camera and then uh, go back down when you wanna do your other instruments. That way it could be a more permanent role in that, in that position. It's a wide field uh, instrument. So this is the field of view compared to other imagers on Keck at this time. It's got a good pixel resolution, 1.5 arc seconds, fast readout time, and the filter change is designed to be changed in during the readout time. So there's no waste on that. Um, the reason, one motivation uh, for this instrument is the fact that Mauna Kea is at 14,000 feet and it is the best site for UV transmission of any eight meter class, even 30 meter class telescopes in the world. So the science you can do here, you can only do here. This is the throughput of the instrument. And there's a lot of lines here, but just look at the color regions there. That's Sloan-like filters showing the throughput of the, of the instrument after uh, correction, after yeah, convolving it with the atmosphere, quantum efficiency of the detector and the optics. And overlaid on here, I show uh, Subaru Hyper Supreme Cam, which is uh, the only other wide field instrument and you can see the differences in um, throughput. It, it's in gray here and even though uh, KWFI is optimized for the blue, it still performs well all the way into the into the red. So what does this translate to? Deep, really deep. You got to start be thinking 27 to 30 magnitudes is the science we're doing now and that's uh, game changing. The, with about an hour or two with KWFI you actually meet what ultra deep fields have right now and you can see the numbers here, and then up in the upper right-hand uh, corner, there's a, a um, plot of the u band a zoom-in of the u band region, which shows you uh, the unique range. It goes all the way down to 3,000 angstroms, and this little blue here is from uh, the Rubin a telescope, which is an observatory, which is in the southern hemisphere, but it shows you a scaled transmission, which is much less. So um, I want to end with some science, if I can get this to advance, which is not doing. So why KWFI? Well, there's lots and lots of science cases from the high redshift universe to high redshift, you know, and supernovae, high redshift supernovae, galaxies, dropout galaxies, large scale structure. There's um, local universe, uh, large uh, galaxies, uh, dynamic universe with uh, uh, TOOs, gravitational waves, and even solar system all over the map here, including uh, CGM work and, and line Malco work. So I'll just focus on two or three real quick ones here. Oh, by the way, again, no telescope more can do these, not even 30 meter telescopes because of the deep blue and because it would take like 50 to 1,000 pointings with a 30 meter, which is not something you want to do. So quickly, gravitational waves. This is a light curve of a kilonova, the only one we know. And I want to point out that it's very fast. This is in days and there's, so it's just hours on the rise and peak. So you've got to be very fast to catch this. This is the one we know and it's very close, 40 megaparsecs. Um, at one meter telescopes can search for these fine, four meter does it fine, and KWFI will just do great. 
But in this last LIGO Virgo run, they've been detecting things out to about 200 megaparsecs, and the wind radio telescopes are struggling. They've got to catch, the, they got to scan these large areas very fast because the localizations are like 10 to 100 square degrees. 40 meter telescopes are doing all right, and KWFI will do great. But, but they're also finding them at, at especially neutron star black hole mergers out to very far distances where you can't even touch it with one meters. Four meters are struggling. And this is where KWFI will be the only instrument that can do these. And with future telescopes, it goes even farther. So KWFI is it. Uh, at high redshift universe with reionization, here's a right, high redshift galaxy, redshift four, uh, UV rest frames down here at the bottom, and this Lyman limit. Uh, blue word of this line here is what reionizes the universe, or at least thought the reionized universe. To measure this, you have to use U-band. If I overlay the filters, this drops in the U-band, and it's very, very faint flux. It's like 28 to 30th magnitude, so you've got to go very deep. If you can, go, if you go to higher redshifts, when that starts moving into the G-band, now you're at redshifts five and above, and the universe is too opaque for this transmission to come through. Even if you have the biggest telescope in the world, you'll never see it. So it can only be done here with in the U-band with KWFI, so it will just dominate this field. And um, finally, uh, space missions. Lots and lots of fun space missions coming along. Euclid, Roman, they're very excited in KWFI because they are going to be doing wide field deep imaging, 28, 29th magnitude, and they need comparable, if not deeper, optical for photometry, drop, uh, U-band dropouts, etc and also to find faint rare targets for JBST and TMT. So at the bottom here, you can see where the OIR telescopes go down to about 5,500 angstroms up. And then there are some UV satellites covering the blue band there. And KWFI will just cover that nice critical niche there of wavelengths at that 29th, 28th, 29th magnitude. So that's KWFI. It is um, going to keep Keck as a leader, even in 30 meter era, because it will do science that no other telescope can for decades. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Um, we already have a question uh, here in the Q&A. So what are the main factors driving the vastly improved sensitivity over HSC? Um, it's the uh, high throughput lenses. It's, um, there's fewer lenses. That's a bigger aperture telescope. And um, the coatings are um, tailored for shorter wavelengths. Uh, I guess all of those things okay. answer the questions. Yeah. Uh, will there be narrow band filters available? Yes, there will be positions for narrow band filters. Thank you for bringing that up because I went through it fast. Uh, there'll be about eight to nine slots. Five of them will probably almost always have Sloan band filters, broadband, but the rest will have room for narrow band filters, either visitor provided or we may even come up with an exchange program if the filters are the same with the Hyper Supreme Cam where we can use airplane filters in both. Okay, um, and the last question, what is the proposed time frame? Um, depends on funding, and it's moving along fine, but if, if we had all the money right now, it would be probably three to four years, but it will depend on how the funds come in. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and we'll move the rest of the discussion over to Slack.